Hey guys, thanks for coming to hang out here on the sessions. A friendly reminder that you can hang out with me in more than one place because I'm also on AMP. Just download the app, come hang out with us Tuesdays and Thursdays, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. Let's get a little more sessions in your life. We all need it. Yay, Nicole! Oh my God, I'm so excited to see you. You have like this glow happening married woman, mother, entrepreneur, just like firing on all <laughs> freaking cylinders. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Oh my goodness. So good. Definitely on a high after the wedding special aired last night. It was really cool to share that with the world, but then yeah. also watch it and Artem hadn't seen it yet. So to watch it with him was also like really neat, except when we had our big argument, I was like, but I was, <laughs> I felt like I was right. So I kind of was like, oh, did you see that moment when you weren't letting me talk? Do you mean when you guys were at like dinner? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that was like, that was a massive buildup because Artem and I are very much, um, we're very passionate and we can be not great one day and the next day be like amazing. And right. it's because he's never been that way. But I think being a twin, Bree and I, we'll cut each other down one second and then next Second, we're like, you want to go get a glass of wine? <laughs> so it's, it's really hard on Brian and Artem. <laughs> it's really funny because John and I can be like that sometimes too. We're like, we'll snap about something. And then like a minute later, it's like, well, what do you want to have for dinner? Okay, fine, whatever. Yeah. Like you just like let things go. How are you in terms of like a communicator? Do you, where do you kind of fall on that scale? So with Artem, he's always felt like, um, I'm like too honest about things, but I feel like because of my past relationship, I held a lot in to be such a pleaser right. that when I got into this relationship, I was like, I'm just going to fully communicate how I feel. Yeah. And it has made me very strong in the relationship where I think Artem at times is like, whoa, because I kind of fell into pattern of like, I think I, not that it was scarred from the past, but I was like, oh, what I feel and what I want to do, I'm going to do it. So if this is the life I want to live. And if this is how my soul is feeling, I'm doing it. Um, so where I had to learn to recommunicate was, you no, know, now I share a life with this man and a child. Mm -hmm. So I need to kind of learn the word compromise and communicate more in that way. And that, that was really tough. And I feel Artem holds a lot in, in his culture. They don't talk about it. I a feel lot like people. that's dudes in general. Like guys it's are totally always it. kind of like that, but I'm sure, you know, culturally that probably plays a role as well. But I'm like that with John, I got to pull teeth sometimes. I'm like, yeah. oh my God. Oh, totally. And I, I even, we were in couples therapy for a bit. And even then I feel like they were trying to pull from Artem. Now he would definitely be more open. Yeah. Um, in those situations. And I'd be like, Oh wow. That's how you really feel. So that is, it's so funny. I've, we've never done couples therapy, but like, it, like, how does that go in terms of like, are you saying things in that group setting that you might not say to each other in person? Like, I always kind of wonder what, like, cause you have a mediator now to be like, pick me. I've, I'm obviously the one that's right here. Yeah. How does that go? Oh yeah. I think especially for the men, they say things that they may not generally say, but I like it because the mediator, the therapist totally brings things out of you Yeah, and you start talking about things. But what's great is when you start to argue or you disagree, she makes you see each other's point of views. Mm -hmm. And this is where I'm like, okay, therapy is super healthy. Even if you don't have the biggest issues to get in there, even every few months and yeah. like check in is great. My life coach, she, um, she helped Artem and I for a bit, but she helps me a lot. I mean, in every aspect of my life, but she was like, do weekly check-ins. She's like once With a week, each other, you and Artem do weekly check-ins. Yeah. Yeah. And let it be like an hour of fruit. Like you get to say whatever it is you want, both of you, but what's on your mind, how are you feeling good or bad? And I have to say that helps a lot. Yeah, It's just kind of like, Hey, this really bothered me this past week. I didn't say anything, but I didn't like how you handled this situation or, Hey, like you were an all-star dad. And I don't know if I gave you enough props for it, but like yeah. you were incredible. 
I feel like that's so important to do because we all get so busy. We all have a million things going on that it's really easy to just like brush things under the rug, especially when it's little things. Now, all of a sudden, these little things have turned into these giant dirt piles underneath this rug. It's smart to just kind of like check in and like have that awareness to keep the relationship healthy. Totally. Like when I look back at a lot of my past relationships, but like if I was only more honest with myself and my partner, things yeah. could have been different, or maybe there wouldn't have been as much heartache, or maybe the road would have been different. But I do believe we all have a specific journey that we're on. And like my yeah. journey led me here. And like I'm beyond grateful for like my life. I look at my son, I look at my husband, I look at our home and where we live, like all of it, all the work I'm doing. I'm like, this is where it brought me. Um, but with looking at art and being like, you are the rest of my life. I just know that like, okay, I have to be honest about these things and speak yeah. about it. So we stay super healthy and passionate because sex is super important for me. No, <laughs> you I, don't say. I know, right? <laughs> and Artem and I have the best sex life. And I, I told him, I'm like, I never want that to change. So I don't ever want us to like resent each other. Like makeup sex is great, but like, Sure. Did, Are, wait, did sex change for you guys after having Mateo? Was there like any yeah. kind, like, how did that change? It's tired. It, it's like tired sex. You know, it's trying <laughs> yeah. to get like amped up. What yeah. was weird was like six weeks after Mateo, I got crazy horny. And oh. Was, he's like, aren't you supposed to wait? And I was like, rip my clothes off now. <laughs> like, and Bree's like, this is not normal. But then- that was like only for like a few weeks. And then it's just, it's tired sex. Yeah. We yeah. have, it's a lot of the same positions. It's not, it's not long all the time. Uh, we get the job done. We both get off and then we're like, let's go to bed. It's <laughs> so funny when that like switch kind of happens. Cause yeah, it's kind of like, it's not just like going through the motions of doing it, but you're like, ah, all right, let's hit it. Yeah. Let's move yeah. on to the next. It's like, it's not checking the box of the day, but it's kind of like, okay, cool. We did that thing. We got to connect, but now like I either need to take a nap or I have like this giant laundry list of things that I need to do. And I'm trying not to think about those while we're having sex. It's That's so, so true. funny. Oh, the other day, because Artem and I, I feel like a lot of our sex is during Mateo's nap time. Oh yeah. And we both like- You have to be strategic as parents. You do. Oh my yeah. gosh. Like when nighttime comes around, majority of the time, like- Done. And had some wine we are done yeah. we want to watch love island uk and just get to that <laughs> um, yeah we both after we had sex we were like oh gosh we got so tired i think it was like super bowl week was insane all this stuff and yeah it was just like finally getting that orgasm and being in bed with him and i was like okay he was about to wake up let's just get the red bull out let's get coffee <laughs> Time to kick out. We got Honestly. shit to do. Yeah. It's so great. It's so fun for me to hear you say with my husband and my son, because I've not even been able to see you in person since all of these things have happened from you having Mateo to even like your and Artem's relationship for the most part. Like I've not seen you a ton during that. So it's really fun. And like watching, watching Nikki Bella says I do like John and I were watching the finale last night and yes, like seeing you as a mom, it's so cool. Thanks. How has, how has being a mom changed things for you? So much. And I, and I know you feel the exact same. It's crazy because when Mateo came into my life, you always hear about the love and it, you can't explain it, but it is crazy. Like Mateo came out and instantly my life changed forever. My perception on everything, like you realize so much does not matter in life. Like oh, yeah. we would stress about or get anxiety about or hold on to. When Mateo came around, it, it was like everything changed. My purpose, my perspective, whether it was my career or how I was living life. And then that love. And he's a huge mama's boy. He, oh. loves, he loves his daddy, but he is all about mama. And, and Mateo and I had quite a journey when he was born. Artem. Um, That's right. You got thrown in the deep end. Oh, the deep end. <laughs> like six weeks after um, we were in Phoenix and uh, Artem had to leave to Dancing with the Stars. And then I was like, okay, well, we'll join you like after eight weeks. Now we're still at the height of the pandemic. So yeah. I already felt very much alone in the pregnancy, as far as like Artem couldn't go to doctor's appointments or any of that. 
Mm-hmm. Thank God I had Brie. Um, and then I remember driving across the desert with Mateo at eight weeks old to LA to get there. And then Artem, his whole dance, like everyone he was dancing with all tested positive for COVID. So like Artem had to vacate the home. They had to clean it. I was alone again in LA for a little bit. And then we were moving to Napa, but I was heading there before Artem was done the season. So Mateo and I then went to Napa. This was all like driving then we went to Napa on our own. It was just Mateo. Did you have anybody else in the car with you or is it just no. you and Mateo? <gasps> and driving with a baby for the first time is terrifying. 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 I mean, and Mateo was not crazy about it, but I'm going through the desert like 120 degrees. <laughs> I would have to nurse him on the side of the road because I didn't trust public restrooms at the time. I'd pee sure. in bottles. It was just, I, I just remember being like so tested as a mom, but even as like my career's grown, any job that I take, it's always like, how does my son fit into this comfortably? And if he doesn't, then I don't take it. And so everything's worked out amazing, but he's just, has changed everything. I thought I would be hustling and doing, you know, wanting to do all these other things. And I want to take him to school. I want to pick him yeah. up. Yeah. I want to be for all the first. Um, yep. I love being like a hands-on mom and it's, it's been amazing. And it's tough. Like I get when they say it's the toughest job, but the most rewarding because I'm effing tired. Oh my God. <laughs> I have been feeling that so much. I was saying to John, I was like, I don't know if I'm tired from like being a mom and having six different jobs mm-hmm. or do I have like a vitamin deficiency? Like what is happening right now? I'm so tired, Gosh. but like, Renee, I'm the same. Oh, it's I got all my blood checked because I'm like, there has to be something. I'm at that point right now too. I'm like, oh. somebody check me. Yeah. Everything be 12 great. shot. Yeah. I know. Right? Everything came back great. Um, you Mama know, just needs a nap. Mom. Mama just needs a nap. That's okay. what people always tell me. So She's did like, you have to like grow in to figuring out making that time for things? Because I feel like we're similar in the sense of like, you have a million different things going on and we're busy and we're working and we have, we, you know, you strive to have the careers that luckily we're able to, to have, and you keep going, you keep going, you keep going, then you have the baby. And then there's sort of that moment of like, wait, how do, cause your, your, your priorities completely shift oh, and you God. need to like, you need to rejig your schedule. Did it take you a second to kind of like figure out what that new pattern was? Oh my gosh, totally. I think that was the one thing I was grateful for about the pandemic is uh, it forced me to sit still for a second when certain companies were either at a pause or closed down. And when I had Mateo and, and knew like how life changing that was, I just realized that I had to start saying no to things, even though it was yeah. hard because I love being known as this entrepreneur, as this TV host, as this podcaster, YouTuber, the list kept going on. But what I realized is one thing I started to care about the most was being an all-star mom. So what did I have to let go of, even if it was hard? And this is where my life coach helped me tremendously, but I knew I had to step away from Nicole and Breezy because I, I couldn't give my full focus to that company, even though I was obsessed with our hair product Yeah, because I just was in other things I was more passionate about. Um, why we haven't relaunched Birdie Bee. Um, there were just things that I had to start to step away from and then opportunities that came my way that I had to say no to because I just realized, okay, with 24 hours in a day and if I was to break this down to be great at these few things, then I knew I had to let go of other things. I mean, yeah. I mean every hour of the day, but when I think of hands-on when he's not sleeping, what else do I have time for? I okay, know. I podcasting, I get to do it with my sister, that's make- when the burnout really hits too, because you think during that nap time, you're like, Hey, now I can work. But like, that's when you kind of need to take a little you pause for yourself. Yes. <gasps> oh, but during my nap all the time. And then I'm like, why did I do this? I need a nap. And now when I'm done with this, he's going to be awake. I got to give him my all till 7 30 PM. And then I'm just going to fall asleep in bed right after might not wash my, t- my face may not brush my teeth. <laughs> We'll try. Been there, been there. Sometimes it's one or the other. I'm like, I'm either brushing my teeth or I'm washing my face. I'm yeah. simply not doing both. Totally. I don't know who I think I'm rebelling against by doing that thing. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm not doing both. F <laughs> this. I don't have time for it all. Do you, um, did you ever get, I guess, I don't know if like resentful is the word, 
Because I feel like I I almost get like resentful towards myself. I'm like, why did you pack your schedule so full? Now I feel like I'm almost not doing everything to the full capability that I should be doing them. And it it makes me like almost a little bit mad. Like I find my like mood shifting a little bit, which is tricky for everybody else around me. <laughs> oh my gosh, totally. Well, Everyone had been asking, like, why haven't the Bella Twins been posting on YouTube? That was the first thing that Brie and I finally had to pause because what we do is WWE would send out the crew about, I think, once a month or twice a month. And we do like morning till night filming to get enough footage for the month. And just that alone started to become exhausting. And Brie and I were like, we're not happy when we're done with it. We're not happy during it. Why are we doing it right now? Right. Like it doesn't fit in the schedule. How to take that out because that shifted major moods and made us very grumpy. Um, and then there was like other things where I was like, if, if I feel like I'm getting like super grumpy, it's, it has to go. Yeah. I just can't do it. Yeah, I know. And it was hard to like, let go of some things, but I, I feel you on that. I just was like, I'm, I'm, I have no energy for this. And it's shifting my energy. I got, I've been into so much energy work. So I've been working hard on the past few years of really trying to listen to my body and that my body, which is my soul and myself is trying to tell me how I feel about things. So if I instantly went into a meeting or zoom and it was with one of my companies or another situation, something potentially about to happen. And if my body shifted, I was like, I'm done. I'm not doing it. That's really smart. Yeah. Cause your body's telling you and you know, you know, like, deep down you're like genetic makeup is like, nope. yeah. Think of some of the things that either didn't work out or you wish you never did. If you go back and think of your feeling before signing that contract yep. or accepting that job, how did you feel? I remember every single one. I never felt great. And I felt like I was making my agent happy or my mm-hmm. team happy, or we just Brie and I will talk about this all the time. And I'm like, there's one even specific contract signing I had. And we both looked at each other and we're like, we don't know if this is right. Yeah. A few years later and a massive lawsuit cost me a lot of money. It was like my body was telling me. So now I listen to my body so much. Okay. So you've mentioned having a life coach, having therapists, mm-hmm. uh, working on energy. Where do you like acquire these things, especially like a life coach? I feel like that's a term that I hear I have no idea where you even find a life coach. How do you find someone that you trust to coach you through life? Yeah. So let me think, how did, how was Carrie referred to me? Um. Oh, a friend. So there was a good friend who it was in my past relationship who kind of just saw me like someone close enough to me who saw that I was internally having a battle and was like, I don't think you're talking about things and I know you and I've known you for a long time. And I think there's a major struggle happening inside you. You need help. And it wasn't like therapy help. It was like, you need life coach help. And so this person had introduced me to this woman and I started to meet with her and she was very life-changing for me. She pulled things out of me that a therapist never could, um, Brie never could. It was, do you guys do it together? You and Brie go to all the, most of these things. So now we now? do, um, we started, I started individually and then I brought Brie in to meet with Carrie. She started in, individually. And then what's great is because all our business, majority of our businesses are together. Brie and I once a month do it together. Okay. So we do our own once or twice a month. And then once a month we do it together. We talk about our brand streams, how we want to grow, um, how, cause Brie and I are very different. As you know, you're very much like a Brie and I'm just this, this bougie bitch over here. And so we've had to learn how to really respect each other in business and respect our own values and differences, but how we can continue to build this empire. She's been so helpful with that, but, um, so she just kind of came into my life and I now can never not have her. Like she is, I will give up all wardrobe cost and never shop online <laughs> just to make sure I could pay for my life coach because it's I'm brilliant. It's, it's smart to like, it. fig- yeah, to like know where to like ask for help or have some guidance. Cause honestly there are, there's so many times like, I mean, shit, even us just jumping on here of like juggling being a mom and working. And listen, I know that's not a new concept. We've been doing this for so long, but it's but like it's for us. Yeah. It's, yeah. Oh my God. When you have a kid, you think you're the first person in the world that had a fucking kid. Totally. Like, <laughs> 
<laughs> I can't so- believe my baby is doing this. Is she a genius? Oh my God. <laughs> I can't little thing. Oh, I know. Um, okay, talk to me about Artem. Um, oh. Because I don't really know Artem. I know Artem through your social media. I know him obviously yeah. from watching Nikki Bella says I do. Why was the connection with Artem so strong for you guys to seek out this this beautiful life together? Artem was just such a soul connection. It was like trying to fight energy. It it was really wild. And when I had met Artem, like I, there was instant chemistry and that soul energy, but not in, for me, not in a romantic way at all. Um, but I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like becoming such good friends with this guy. I never thought I'd be good friends with like a Russian ballroom dancer. Like <laughs> we have in common. Didn't Our, see that on the bingo card. Yeah. I mean, we were not only raised so differently, but just how we both live life is so different. Like arms more in your breeze side of things. Okay. okay. Not me <laughs> at all. <laughs> So it was, we just had this amazing instant connection. Now, what was crazy is everyone else around us saw all this chemistry and stuff. And I don't know if I was just so terrified to dance every week. I did not see what everyone else was seeing. Yeah. Like I knew I I had this, this amazing energy with this person who I was like, you're going to be my BFF for life. That's literally how I would treat him. And he's like, great. I'm sure. <laughs> oh, he <Cool>. fell. Yeah. <laughs> But I was like, that's how like I felt about him was like this BFF. We did a farmer's market thing and that was like fun and it it was flirty, but it was when we were sitting down and like staring at each other's eyes and he's like, how's life? And, and I got so shy and I was like, hey, like, yeah, whatever. Like, you know, I just, (laughs) I, it was really, it was weird, the shift. And then I just butterflies and like I was like oh my god why am I finding him so hot don't find him hot who cares <laughs> Artem like you don't like him and then it was I remember I was um leaving his house and he just like grabbed me and put me up against the wall and like laid this kiss on me because I think there was so much build up for so long mm-hmm. it was like holy shit. like I uh-huh. mean the greatest kiss of all time like fireworks and like tingles and I mean, it was just a kiss, but it felt like I just like had the best making love session ever. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. And I just remember walking out the door like, oh, right. Well, okay. That was, I want to move to LA. I want to be <laughs> by him. <laughs> no, but it was, Um, I, I know people will probably, I wrote this, but what I did realize is like Artem was totally heaven sent to me. He came into my life exactly when he needed to and he came in for a reason um because you know I was originally supposed to do dancing with the stars when I came back with my neck injury at SummerSlam yeah dancing with the stars was trying to get me that season and I was going to dance with Derek Huff okay and I remember sitting and talking with Vince in the office and I I was just telling Vince like I want my comeback to be in the ring I'll do both but I won't choose dancing over wrestling I want to wrestle and so Vince was just like, Chris Jericho said it was really hard doing both. So you just have to make that decision. I was like, okay, I'm going to wrestle. I'm not going to do Dancing with Stars. Like, yeah. I didn't care because I was just wanting to get back in that ring. And all that happened because of the Eva Marie stuff so quick. But then the opportunity came back and like, look, then I was with Artem. So yeah. I just feel like, you know, that's your journey and things are meant to be. And then it just happened really Fast for him and I. I literally got pregnant eleven months in test dating. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. wild. Wild, like it. It just and I think because we have that soul connection, but we really got to know each other dancing. That it just when it came to the love connection part, mm-hmm. and I would try to break up with him like a <laughs> few times. Like I was so confused, <laughs> and I even like sat him down, and I was like, "This is when I was like always so honest." And I was like, look, I'm not healed from my past relationship. I'm still struggling and dealing with things. Like if you want to deal with a girl that's on a roller coaster ride of emotions, feel free. If you don't, I don't blame you run for me. Like this is like maybe a walking red flag right now. So like, just don't deal with me. And he would not, he wouldn't give up. And I just, I was still going on my own journey and he just was there all the time and through bad times and good times and And then now here we are and he's literally Renee, when you meet him, he's the sweetest man in the world. Like everyone says it when they meet him. Yeah. They're like, 
he's so sweet and he has this aura about him. He's very calming. And everyone will say that to me too. Like strangers, they'll be like, he's so calming. <laughs> And I'm like, exactly what I needed. Yeah. I he calms me. He's my chamomile. Like it's <laughs> wild. Like let's cozy up with a nice little book and a blanket. You know? Yeah. Yep. Oh and my he, gosh. Yeah. He's exactly what I needed. He's calmed me in so many ways and has shown me like how to relax in life and enjoy the little things. He's a very, very simple man not bougie at all. Um, (laughs) does he struggle with some of the bouginess beyond? (laughs) Oh my gosh. And that was worse than Brian does. They're about equal and they'll have these conversations. And, um, at times I feel like Artem's more because what the gifts Brian gets Brie and I'll be like, Artem, did you see what Brian got Brie for our birthday? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Brian's a really good gift giver. Brian is like insanely thoughtful and he'll spend like money, but like Brian is the ultimate at gift giving. I'm always okay, like, Hey, I know that. Oh yeah. Like the stuff he'll do. And then the cards, I just always like love a good card. Lots of good cards. Yeah. And Artem's very cute. His is very simple. And it's, I laugh because it's like, he'll hear me say something. It's always either diamonds or Opus one. I feel like, because he's like, what <laughs> she talks about so <laughs> when he does give me a gift. It's like that, but he's, he's very, he's frugal. Even we have the same business manager and they're like, Artem, I need to spend a little bit more money, you know, for taxes. Like he just, he does not, he likes to invest his money, but he sends yeah. money at home. He just doesn't like to spend. Yeah. It. Yeah. Well, Hey, fair enough. John's like that too. John, yeah. like, John does not like, he likes to tighten those purse strings where I'm like, let's get this. And oh, yeah. about this? like right now, like our kitchen's being renovated, our bathroom's being renovated. Oh, yeah. One that he wants to like gouge my eyeballs out. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So you guys were obviously raised very differently. You mentioned some of the cultural differences between you and Artem. How does that play in when raising a baby together? Oh, it's probably some of our biggest arguments. I bet. I- I realized we both though are very much helicopter parents. So um, it's funny because we'll hear some comments of like, oh, they're so first time parents, but I'm like- Fuck off. Yeah, yeah. first of all, yeah, we are, but like, yeah. shut up. I'm like, I'm not gonna go let my kid run around the block. He's two and a half. So sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna be right there all the time. He's gonna hate me at a certain age and then he'll be grateful for me at a certain age. But mm-hmm. I will be by his side- you know, till my, my, the end of my time. But, um, we, we have differences. It's weird because I feel like we believe in a lot of the same things as far as how we are with Mateo, but then we will get in these arguments. I'm trying to think of some where we will just be very stern. And I sometimes feel like it's like, no, I heard the teacher say this. No, I heard her say this. And then it's like, um, like Mateo's in speech therapy. And so it'll be like, we hear different things. Um, but we've had a few, I feel like those are our most arguments, mm-hmm. uh, just how we feel about things. Artem's more protective in the way of like, I'm more about toughening him up in certain things. And Artem's just, he's such a graceful human being and just calm and peaceful. We lived very different lives in that way. He and his family never argued. There was never abuse. He didn't fight growing up. He danced. I grew up in a very different home where there were drugs and abuse and like also love, but we handled things very differently. I was disciplined in a very much like a very different way. Artem was never disciplined and not that I don't believe in disciplining how that was at all. Like I'm raising my son the exact opposite, but I just grew up so differently. Like when I handle things, they'd be more aggressive or with fighting Artem never once, never. So, um, I just want my son to be prepared because Mateo is exactly like his dad. He's the sweetest boy um, to where I've even seen at times on the playground. I'm I'm like, walk away. Artem's like, I got it. Because he's the one who kind of gets bullied or boys taken away or hit down to the ground. And and he'll just look and not understand it and like lets them do it. Where I'm like, go get it back. Like, grab it. And Artem's like, you just go. And I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, want him to like stick up for himself. But I was like, I told Artem, like when it comes that time, I am teaching him 
how to stick up for himself. I want him to always stay sweet boy, but I want him to be prepared. So, you know, when that Life happens- comes at you fast, man, it comes at you fast and hard. You got to be prepared. Right. Oh it's hard. And it's definitely hard as a parent. And I feel bad for all kids who get bullied. Like it's- I know. It's the saddest thing in the world. Having a kid, like it's always something, I mean, you know, we've done a million different Be A Star rallies and we've, you know, we've talked about anti-bullying so many different times, but now when you have a kid- to imagine somebody treating your kid that way or your kid being the kid they can't speak up for themselves or oh my god like I just can't handle it it shatters my heart shatters little babes oh my gosh um okay so Nikki Bella says I do great show loved it you guys are like the queens of reality television (laughs) from bringing in total divas total bellas the show you just did what makes reality television successful because you guys I feel like you've really unlocked that secret code because I feel like everything you guys do there's like this authentic authenticity and so much truth behind everything you guys do and you guys are such open books which I applaud you guys for because that is hard to do yeah how do you guys juggle it (sighs) you know it's difficult it's crazy that we're going up on 10 years in July will be 10 years since Total Divas' debut crazy crazy um I definitely feel that you totally have to have a niche for reality TV. Reality TV is not for everyone. It's not it's- for me. It was hard for me. Yeah. I was like, this, I, I, it's funny because I think so many people are like, I could do reality TV. I'd be great for reality TV. Then I'm doing it. And I'm like, oh, I'm not good for this. Yeah, it's so <laughs> true. Like you, you saw that and we saw that with a few total divas um, and even beyond that other people I know in other shows, like they're like, how do you do it? And I think you're either born with it or you're not as far as it being yourself and letting things happen in front of the camera. And so I think that's one of the things Brie and I found our niche in like, okay, we're not movie stars. We're not this, we're we're reality. We are born to be reality stars. And we had always hear that when we were young and then look at what it's unfolded. And I think, you know, Brie and I, our friends would always say this, even when we started wrestling and being on TV, and how we are on our off days, they're like, don't, shouldn't you like put makeup on? Like we want to take photos with you on the streets or shouldn't you do this? Brie and I just never gave a shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I yeah. think that's what makes us good reality stars is we don't like, we're not always strict about our weight. We're not always strict about what we eat. We like to go have fun. We don't care at times how we look. And I think that translates well on reality TV because we don't hide anything. We're fully open books, the good, the bad, the ugly, um, and people really relate to that. I also feel like when you have some of these famous families, like the Kardashians and a few of the other ones that live life so large, it was like, people were just craving having people to relate to yeah. like in a home that's relatable or at least goals. Like, Oh, I could end up getting a house like Nikki's. I could just, you know, get this great job for a few years and I could be where she's at. Um, and I think also with bodies and how we look, I, I feel like the world to that point was just craving people being authentic and organic and not having these unrealistic goals, whether it was body or career or life goals. Like they just wanted to sit on the couch and connect with someone. And especially in a world where we tend to be more alone because we have social media and we have apps and we have all these things where we connect with people through a phone or through a computer, but, um, we're kind of losing that human touch. And so I think when sitting on the couch, people just needed to connect with realness and Brie and I have always just stayed real in who we are. That's why divas towards the end got hard on us because we saw how fake it became. And I, I couldn't be a part of it anymore. It was- really was like a glaring difference of like seeing the way total divas came together and like what it originated as to what it grew to, et cetera, et cetera. So then you guys start doing total Bellas. And it was like, that's when it was really like a, Oh, there it is. Like that's the show. And I don't know if it's like, I mean, your family's also great as well. And there's like that trust where I think with total divas too, is a lot of like, is this actually happening? Yeah, like what? It was just a really funky little like spot to be in where I think with what you guys were able to do with Total Divas and when Nikki Bella says I do, it's like you guys just were able to to be like kind of safe with each other and know what the boundaries were. Exactly. And that's like the plus of being a twin and why I've been able to grow such an incredible brand with Brie is we could look at each other. We know we have each other's backs or we could read a certain situation. Um, 
I mean, we, we do it all the time. We just give each other a look and like, I can know exactly <laughs> what I mean, or when a deal is about to happen or her thoughts on it or whatever situation we're in, even at school, I'm like, she can look at me and I'm like, oh shit, something happened. Bird. <laughs> Gotta find out the tea on that. Um, and I'm blessed to have that. I couldn't imagine life any other way. And it's helped with my success. You know, it's funny because people always say like, especially it's more the wrestling industry and it's that 10% because as you know, I'm the most hated person on the internet. The most. It's so <laughs> wild to me. We all get our fair share, but yeah. yeah I think I get I get the gold or the trophy for that <laughs> <Yeah>. one. <laughs> you um, get the lion's share. Oh yeah. Which has become such a joke in our family. But um, um oh, where was I? Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, what were we saying Not about... Much the hate we get online with your working, working with Brie, you guys know what each other. Oh speaking. yeah. The hate, you know, they'll always say like, they always want to give men the credit of where you, where you get to. It's always a man. I want to be like, no, it's the bitch that I shared the womb with and I've grown with without her. I wouldn't be as successful as I am. Mm -hmm. And it's always grosses me out. And this is women, right? Like women, all of our stuff gets taken away whenever we're with a really great guy. It's always. Like, it's like, I know. I mean, I'm a great woman. That's why I got a great guy. Like, I, yeah, come know. on. No, it's and true. Honestly, it helps them more. I could name all of us that helped elevated our men in so many ways, but mm -hmm. you know, that's women in every industry. I've had so many incredible conversations with women that in these high powerful jobs on camera, off camera, we all say the same, everyone deals with it in all different industries, but it's so uh, crazy. You always think that we're making these like leaps and bounds, but like, it is crazy. The things that we still deal with on like a daily basis, Oh, you, you know, you wouldn't be where you were. If you weren't married to so-and-so you wouldn't have this opportunity. Da, da, da. It's like, I have been hustling for a long ass time. This did not just land in my lap. Right. And you don't get as far as we do without being talented or great at what we do. Yeah. And it's the, I don't, I don't know when that perception will change. Um, hopefully one day, I think it's going to take just how people raise their kids, um, yeah. really changing that because the stuff I still hear, it's just mind blowing to me. If you speak up as a woman, you're an automatic villain or you're looked at as complaining or it's not good enough, or it's always then directed back towards you. It's like, yeah. But it's something where I know like it's one of my purposes, so I'll never shut up. And I'm like, I'm just gonna, I have such thick skin now that I'm just like, I'll I'll keep talking, keep doing me. Okay, so that being said, you guys don't get the credit that you deserve for what you've been able to do for women's wrestling um, from being in the ring to our perception outside the ring. I do think that you get the credit from the girls that know, that saw yeah. the work that you did. I think like we all know, yeah. but I think in terms of what is projected in terms of what you guys did, you guys do not nearly get the credit that you deserve. What is that about? It's, it's hard. Um, you know, I remember one time Triple H saying, um, perception is reality in this business and we could perceive people however we want. And I think that's what's happened to Brie and I, um, I think when we are in the run and, and I know AJ spoke about in her book and I think she's had, has regretted a lot because that could have been a time where we could have empowered women even more and like created more change. Um, that was still a fight and that locker room was really difficult. And a lot of women could speak about that. And I think that was the time when I saw so many women with their heads down that I was like, oh, I'm going to fight real hard for this. Yeah. Um, and I think there were things said that made people perceive Brie and I as like, we only cared about reality TV and not wrestling, which was so beyond untrue. I didn't have to come back with reality cameras. I already had them with E. But I chose to come back to make sure that we showcased women's wrestling because I thought what women were doing was so badass and they weren't being appreciated for it. And then it was like, I think when it came to evolution um, and the promo that Stephanie cut, you know, I think the wrestling industry believes so much of all those promos that are cut because sometimes we do throw truth in it. And when we were blamed for everything, I feel like that is when the hate poured in. It was like that AJ time. Um, when honestly total divas should have been, um, praised even more what I felt because what we were doing was insane. We literally 
we're at the point of almost beating the Kardashians in ratings. Like wow. it was insane what we were yeah. doing in season one. And they were even picking up more episodes. Oh my God. I remember. Yeah. I remember uh, because we were shaking the world up and like, what a great time we could have had the industry behind us, but instead they used it to turn it against us. And that was like really shocking to me. Cause I was like, but wait, we're, we're making great change for women's wrestling. Why are you hating on what it? What do you think that was about? Was it about like taking a, a moving eyes to the reality show instead of just the wrestling? Was it that like women's wrestling was changing at the time and they really still wanted to coin you guys as divas? Like, what do you think that that I, like opinion was? Yeah, I think a lot on like a few, like as far as the boss, I felt like it was the first time he lost control of what mm. he can make and not make. That's he interesting. Did. Yeah. Because when Brie and I won Diva the year, we got in trouble and I got yelled at. And I remember being like, like we came back so happy and it was like, oh, because you have, you brought in all these new viewers and the women are now voting for you. And all these new women are here for you too. And I was like, and your jaw must have been on the floor what on the floor everyone around was on the floor like the Bella twins are getting yelled at for being successful like <laughs> it, because it wasn't what they wanted because they would they were the storytellers they push who they want the crowd to be behind just perception is reality that is WWE to a T they they tell even though the the fans think they own it no they laugh in the back no we own you at the end of the day you chant, you're chanting that because we just made you believe in something. It's, it's fun to watch it because it's like, you see one part of people thinking they're running the show. And then you see the people in the back, the like, full marionette. Oh, we're yep. Running. Yep. yep. So I truly believe total divas was the first thing they couldn't control. They couldn't control the success. They couldn't control what mainstream was. They, there was no control. So that was hard on one side because they lost that. And then I think everyone backstage truly thought we were going to fail. And when we weren't, I, I don't like to use the word envy or jealousy, but I think there was a bit, and we all kind of get that. I, I've had well, that in my life. And there's and a really funny feeling. I think sometimes of like, yeah, I don't know if it's a fear or an envy or what it is, but it's almost like when you're in and you're working, you're on the road, you're doing all these things. You kind of think that that's the cap. But everybody knows we want to go off and do movies. You want to go do this. You want to do X, Y, and Z. But there's always sort of that big question mark of like, well, you're not actually going to be able to make it. And then you do. Yeah. And that brought in a lot of hate. That like within um, people in the back, it, it brought like amazing things for se like some people were super supportive. And then there were some that were hate. And then some got the mic and they just really expressed it. And it was sad to me. I remember that time it gave me great fire and it made for great story. Um, but I wish that like, people wouldn't have believed it beyond that, but it was also sad for me because to slut shame or, um, mm -hmm. really just tear women down. I, I was not for that. Like, I remember when I had to cut a promo on Kong before Brie and I had left for 11 months. And I just remember feeling like shit. And I went with what they said on paper. Yeah. I just hated that feeling. It was so wrong. And, and I talked to Kia before, but like we, Kia and I even talked after it just didn't feel good. And I didn't like it. I was like, I don't want cheap pops from the crowd anymore. And especially yeah. if it's not approved by the woman. And I could have said a lot more stuff on the mic to get these greater reactions. It was never worth it to me because at the end of the day, I was like, we're still telling stories. And that's kind of how I left the rest of my career. But then the, some of the stuff that would be said to me, um, on a hot mic with, you know, not even realizing, I just remember being inside, like just disappointed of like, okay, we just took five steps back. Right. Instead of right. like just tearing these barriers down, breaking them, which we still shattered them, but it just took even more work. And then I just have to live with this hate in this industry. And it's hard on me because I love, I love wrestling. Yeah. What I did. I love what I do. I love everything about it. Um, but I will just have to carry this cloud of hate with me. Was it hard to go to work during that when you're feeling that way with people, you're still having these and like for people that don't understand, like having those cameras on you all the time, you've got a mic pack that's burning through your bra. Like you've got all these things that are happening and then just feeling this, this negative energy from everybody. Was that hard to go to work during that? 
So in the beginning, it was hard. And then I was like, you know what? You can, you can woman up and you can make this something. Yeah. And I remember one day looking at Max and go, every day I'm walking in, I'm going to war and I'm going to pack up. I'm going to suit up. And I'm going to go in there. I'm going to win this thing. And I just got this fire. And I think that's what really helped create fearless Nikki is <laughs> even whether it was filming a scene or just walking in to go to catering, I was like, I'm going to just, you know, own the place, not be affected. And if I give myself this energy and this feeling, it's just, it's, I'll be unbothered. I'm going to live rent free in everyone's head. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going to do my thing. And it really helped me. It And it helped me conquer a lot. Like I just took that fire and I rose up like a Phoenix and I was like, here we go. So that being said, you were having some fucking kick-ass matches. Like, and again, giving you the credit that you deserve because you and Brie go out there and have these amazing matches. You guys are incredible athletes. And I think probably when that fire is connecting with that athletic side of you, you were really having some like, incredible matches was that kind of two things coming together at once for you totally and you know what it was as well I, I was not that I was like no more Mrs. Nice girl because that I was you know still kind to people but I was like you know what I'm done being passive in that way because when we were at FCW no cameras were around we were do doing kick-ass matches but no one ever saw that we we yeah. were just an era and when I came up on the road, it was like, can't do this, can't do that, can't do that. Oh, just go out there. Um, let them like throw you around, make sure pull hair slap. But, and I listened and I listened all the time and I should have fought for myself. I should have fought on everything I learned as an athlete, as a professional wrestler. And I should have went out there and showcased and I did it. So when that fire came about, I was like, no one's telling me no anymore. They don't, they don't want to do my uh, move that I just learned or this the sequence that I think looks really badass. They don't want to treat me like I'm a powerful woman. Well then get in line. I'll, I'll fight someone else tonight. Like yeah. we're just going to go out there and do it. And I feel like with that fire and then just going out there, it like created a whole different person that I wish I was, but you know, I had to take, I had to yeah. learn a lot. And now I take that even into what I do now. It's like, the whole apologize later is such a good thing to go yeah. into because it lets you be you and what you have in here. And it took me to get all that fire to finally go out there and be that person. Being away from wrestling, the amount that you have now, do you miss it? Is there, is there stuff that you're still watching or keeping up on? Or are you kind of removed from it at this point? I, I miss it a lot. I, every time I go do cardio and I like have put on my music, I'm like thinking storylines and cutting. <laughs> do I ever stop cutting promos? And like, <laughs> it's like, we're playing flag football this week. And I started like cutting promos and I'm like, Whoa, he's coming out. I'm like, shoot. It's like, I just have so much fun with it. And by the way, that field goal you kicked was fucking great. Yeah. How amazing was, <laughs> was that? I was like, Oh, look at you go. A soccer player so coming in hot. Competitive. Like it's like, I put so much pressure on myself within that five minutes. Bree's like, dang girl, this is for fun. And I'm like, no, I'm doing no, it's not. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Um, but I miss it. I miss it so much. And I watch um, every now and then it's whatever I catch up with. I mean, oh man, I go to bed so early. Majority you and me of both. Time, right. And yeah. so what I catch up with online and it's only the women's stuff. Um, but it's like, I'll watch certain matches and I'm like, oh, that'd be so fun to be a part of. Or when I hear I'm cutting promos and, and I think what the women are doing there is great. That's why they need more opportunity. Yeah. And just be about championships. I'm like, when we, when I was on SmackDown, every storyline I did had nothing to do with the championship. Right. It, and we had great stories. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I want, I want, I wish I could be back. I would love to go back to do things, but it's just different when you're a mom. Yeah. Oh my God. 100%. Listen, I'm on the road now with AEW and like being a mom, doing the podcast, doing all these things. And it's like, it is, it's totally, it's totally different. Yeah. yeah. In the locker room at AEW is very young. I'm like, oh my God, I'm such a geezer over here. Oh my, and then that's the other thing. It's like, <laughs> I'm, you know, I can't even blame my baby weight anymore. Like Brie goes, you know, he's two and a half. I'm like, dang, <sighs> but call it like the Napa 10 here. And I'm just, I'm struggling. Like I have been, but it's cause I'm enjoying life so much. And I just, just, I know I'll get there to get this last 10 off, but like, it's hard uh, yeah. <laughs> and it's getting to my gear. I mean, already the rumble was hard for me. I was like, Oh shoot. And like, 
I just, I was so busy with Mateo. I didn't get like new gear made. I was like, it's fine. And when I put my shorts, I was like, so how do I Amazon high waist? (laughs) Those were literally $8 Amazon. Oh, I need high waisted everything. I was just, I'm like, I need a high waisted bathing suit. I'm not doing anything like below the belly button. Oh, yeah. Uh-uh. No, no absolutely below not. the belly button. I'm like, oh yeah. So this doesn't Hard change. Pass. <laughs> awesome, great. No way. <laughs> ah, okay, let's talk about Barmageddon really quick because you stepped in as host of the Century. How much fun was it doing this show and stepping into that like real host gig? Oh, I loved it every second. The moment I met Blake and Carson via Zoom. We all had instant chemistry. We clicked and I was like, I really hope I get this. And then just being on set, um, their team is amazing. Whole production, director, producer, um, writers. And I just loved it. I feel at home. Like <clears throat> my first episode, and I didn't have any training, it was Gwen Stefani and Cheryl Crow. I'm like, oh, no big deal. I didn't just- realize I have on my Gwen Stefani shirt right now. You got to Ooh, hang out I with love- Gwen and I Cheryl Crow. I mean, icon. I was in heaven. Icons. icons and to like be my first episode of host two I was like damn it like this is like I have to look them in the eye I would shit oh yeah but I realized I was like oh my gosh like I meant to do this I love it it was comfortable it was great um and I just felt at home like this felt like a new home for me mm-hmm. and we had a blast and I was just so fortunate to work with such incredible people um and I like to be in environments where I get it. It's another place where I get to just be me. I could say yeah. read our comments real quick and I'm not in trouble. I just get to have my no filter. <laughs> it's hard to, when you've been filtered for so long, you're like, oh, wait, what? I mean, I guess you get yeah. to be so unfiltered on the reality show and stuff right. too, but still. But there's some, um, like I always say, there's late night Nikki and there's <laughs> Nikki and I get to be late night Nikki and <laughs> I love it. It was like even doing AGT Extreme and yeah, with yeah. those guys, Simon, Travis, and Terry. I was like, I was so blessed to work with like the most amazing guys in the industry for like a year and a half. It's, it was just amazing. Like absolutely amazing. So I'm excited to get back into Barmageddon and I want to do more with hosting now. Like, yeah. What do you want to do? Like, what would you want to host? You're really great at it. Thank you. Well, There'll be an announcement soon <gasps> oh. that I'm hosting with Brie. Oh, yay. We already filmed it and it, it was a dream come true in a part of the industry that I'm absolutely obsessed with. So to get there, to be the host and be at the front of it and see everything happen right then and there was amazing. I cannot wait for that to be announced. And I just want to continue to grow as far as like when I'm even more comfortable in hosting and doing even more. I would love one day to host like award shows and like get more yes. of that, but always stick with these shows that I have. And, um, it's like, I, I told my team, I was like, I want, I need a hosting coach. I want to get better at this. I want to grow. And Brie and I have this dream to have our own talk show. That is like our goal. You guys day. would be great. You guys would really crush that just because yeah. you guys, you guys know how to push each other's buttons and like oh, yeah. get people like outside of the box and have the funny opinions and yeah. we get and, and we can we help we make people talk like they, yeah. they talk and they're also like did I just did I just say that <laughs> um, yeah but so that's that's pretty nice goal and I just love transitioning into this area of tv and I've realized how much I loved it um the whole acting thing I would we actually have some discussions about movies in the future but like small ones because I, I can't go be on set for three months like oh. I'll do a few weeks but I can't sure. be 11 days has been the longest I have been away from Mateo and I I don't think I could do anything more than 14 days um and even wow, that, that must have been rough rough he was so mad at me oh he because he went to all the sets with me so this was the Barmageddon and Nashville was the first one he didn't um and because Artem was home. So we're like, let's just keep him home. And it, what I've realized with Mateo is I can't FaceTime as much because it just makes him so upset. He starts to cry. And yeah. so it, it was really tough. Even just being away from him this past Super Bowl week, I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do it in a few months when I go film the next season? And he, are you, you going to be filming in Nashville again? Yeah. 
that's pretty close to me. I think I should make a little trip down and come have a little oh hang. God, me too. Yeah, a little four hour drive from Cincinnati and nothing. Yeah. You have to. Go. <laughs> Oh my god! So fun. Okay, so you've got these other, you've got these shows happening. Is there anything else that is on the Nikki Bella vision board? Because I know that you are a thinker and a doer, and you kind of plot out all the things that you want to do. Is there anything else that maybe we don't know about? I mean, you guys wrote a very successful book. You have these other shows. Like, is there something else that, um, yeah, something that kind of tickles the old pickle that we don't know about? Um, I just, what I'm focusing a lot on now is growing our wine brand worldwide. Um, right now we're in the process of starting a tasting room. So I think we finally found our spot, which will be a complete rebuild, but Brie and I want that. We have this dream of exactly how we want our tasting room to be like. So my focus is completely driven to, um, if it's not TV stuff, I'm all about my wine and Bonita Bonita. And I told Brie, I'm like, at the end of this year, I want it to be to be available worldwide. And then I have a dream that I started to work on. And my team is like, can you do one thing at a time? And I'm like, no, I can't. (laughs) But I really want a tasting room in Paris. And and so that is a goal of mine. I have a whole vision board just for Bonita Bonita. I really want to get on. There's a list with wine enthusiasts. That's the 40 under 40 of different things you've done in the wine industry. And my clock's ticking. So I was like, I'm getting on that list this year. I'm opening up a tasting room in Paris, opening up a tasting room in Napa Valley, and we are doing this shit with Bonita Bonita. Oh, that's huge. We're, we're working on like other things as far as canned um, tequila or agave wine and doing some other drinks that will either fall underneath that umbrella. Shouldn't or- you get some like Russian vodka up in the house? Right. I told Artem, I was like, come on, let's go. Right. I mean, I remember we first started dating and like, he'd take me to a few Russian spots and they're just sipping on vodka. I was like- God, uh, what is your favorite Russian dish? So he makes these, um, Renee, you would actually have so much fun cooking with Artem. He, oh, I see the way he cooks. He does not mess around at all. Um, he does these dumplings that are like so amazing. It's, um, I can't, I'm trying to think what's inside of it. They, you know, Russians do a lot of stews and I, and I like them, but when he makes the, this type of dumpling that he grew up on, it is so yummy. Mm. Oh my gosh, I'm starving right now. I just feel I haven't had breakfast. By the way, are you in California right now? You're home? Yeah. You knock out these interviews early in the morning, huh? <laughs> I didn't even think today's no school. So oh, it's, Lord. Here, this is Rachel on right now. I'm with Taylor <laughs> Dillon. But um, it's, yeah, I'm like, when did three-day weekends turn into like kids get Friday and Monday off? I'm that's like, a party. That's a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of occupying some time. What are we going to do? Honestly, like Brie yeah. here in Tahoe skiing and she's like, do you guys want to come to Tahoe? I was like, no, vacation sounds like being at home for the weekend. So I, yes. I activities to do, but I'm like, yeah, I'm home. We're that's- staying in. Well, yeah. I'll let you get back to mom duty and uh, go find some things to do with Mateo. I really appreciate you hopping on here with me. You're absolutely crushing life. Continue to be an inspiration and hopefully I'll get to see you soon. I know Nashville, Nashville. Yeah, uh, actually, maybe San Francisco. Uh, no, uh, Brie and I really want to go to the show. We want to go to that show, and then we want to go see Sasha's match. Oh, As, well, Sasha's weekend. match is this weekend. Yeah, this weekend. It's this weekend. Saturday, yes, right? Are you I going? believe so. No, no, because John was supposed to be on that, and he's not. So no, I won't be there in Tahoe. Yeah, maybe I'll I go know. Soraya was possibly going. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. I really yeah. want to, I was like, that's only like an hour and a half away. Yeah. So it's really fun to go. Um, and then, but yeah, Brie had asked me, she's like, Hey, I'm taking the kids to the AW show in San Fran. If you want oh yeah. Cause we'll have Nora with us. Oh, you will. Oh, yeah. She's bring Tay. Oh my God. Can you imagine seeing all these kids together for, oh my God, I would die. Okay. I'll talk to Artem because I'm like, maybe we bring him in right after nap time. My son is such a napper. It's the be- best thing ever. I always have to wake him up at 3 p.m. If He would sleep till 4, 4.30 if I'd let him. Like he <laughs> loves his naps. <laughs> um, so yeah, maybe I'll bring him in because it, it's, I one, I can't wait to hold Nora. She, oh, I, yeah. We need to get all these kids together. My heart might explode. I would yeah, die. She's so cute. 
little I, peanut. Oh yeah, my god. And I god. could just tell the personality. Oh. <laughs> Oh, uh, she's a little firecracker. Girl. She's pretty funny. She's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. And I see both of you in her. At times I'm like, so Renee. And then I'm like, so John. Like, I know. It's so funny how she switches like that. Cause there are times that I do see a lot of me, but a lot of times we're like, oh, that's John's kid. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I, like they're clones of their dads. It's like everyone always says that the first baby really is a clone of their dad. Yeah. They always say that, but yeah, I know. I need to hurry up and knock out baby number two. I you know why they say that too is so because- You can identify them, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> You're the father. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I feel okay, bad well, because this guy the other day, and then I'll let you go, um, this kid didn't look anything like him. And he like, you know, it's like, I know, like blah, blah. And I'm like, what does the mailman look like? And everyone got <laughs> quiet and he was like- and I'm like, oh, I was joking. Like, I'm yeah, a kid, but I was like, is this like a <laughs> subject? Whoops, yeah. Daisy. Yeah, you can never be too careful these days. You never know. Honestly. Literally, as soon as they like, I had a C-section, they like cut Nora out of me and they're like, here's your baby and passed her off to John. They're like, this is your kid. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> so funny. Well, yeah, hopefully San Francisco, we can see you guys. I would love yeah. that. That would be such a great catch up hang. Yes. Sign me up. Well, thanks for hopping on here. I appreciate yeah, it. Totally. Bye, Renee. So I'll see you. Bye.